At our number 10 spot, we have the Stanley Hotel. This is a hotel Stephen King stayed at and which inspired him to write The Shining. So it's already noted that this hotel had some creepy stuff within. In 1911, the head housekeeper, Mrs. Wilson, was lighting lanterns in rooms 217. There was then a sudden explosion and she went crashing down to the McGregor dining room below. Surprisingly, broken ankles were her only injuries. Now in the afterlife, the legend says that she still takes care of room 217. Guests in the room report having their items moved around and their luggage being unpacked when they're in the room with their belongings. In some rare cases, guests reported their luggage being packed for them and left in the front of the door as if someone wanted them to leave. Then a small few reported seeing Mrs. Wilson's apparition in the room just before she disappears through the walls or through the floors. At a number 9 spot, we have Del Coronado Hotel. This is named the most haunted hotel in San Diego for good reason. The legend goes that a woman named Kate Morgan checked into room 3327 on Thanksgiving Day 1892. She was only 24 years old at the time. According to staff, she waited 5 days for a gentleman to join her when he didn't end up showing up. She fell into a deep depression and then took her own life from it. Now guests say she haunts the exact room in room 3327. Lights will flicker and the TV will always turn on and off regardless of how new the TV is. In some cases, the doors get forcefully shut by themselves and the room changes temperatures drastically. Not just in the room, but in the hotel's gift shops, things seem to fall off shelves but always land upright, never breaking. At a number 8 spot, we have Nottingham Road Hotel. The railway hotel was first completed in 1891 and was soon blooming socially and also served as a popular stop for British soldiers during the Boer War. Today, the Railway Hotel has now been named the Nottingham Road Hotel and a lot of scary things happen at this hotel. This hotel is supposedly haunted by a ghost named Charlotte. Charlotte was a beautiful lady who served the men during the war, so one day she supposedly fell in love with one soldier who ended up passing away. A deeply saddened Charlotte then threw herself off the balcony leading to her demise. So now she haunts the hotel and has been spotted many, many times by different guests over the years. The balcony is at room 10, which is where most of the paranormal activity is said to have happened. Guests in the room report seeing her on the balcony still, and sometimes they would claim that she would fold her clothes for them. Sightings of Charlotte are common with even surveillance showing a ghostly white woman appearing in the bars, around the corridors, and even down the stairs. At our number 7 spot, we have the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. The Roosevelt Hotel, right in the heart of Hollywood Boulevard, is LA's longest operating hotel, opening in 1927. It's been visited by countless celebrities through the decades, Bruce Willis, Marilyn Monroe, Lindsay Lohan, Scarlett Johansson, just to name a few. And it even hosted the first ever Academy Awards in its Blossom Ballroom in 1929. Apart from its association with glamour and fame, this hotel is the most haunted hotel in Hollywood. It's said that the ghost of Marilyn Monroe haunts Suite 1200 where she appears to guests staying in the room. An employee dusting the mirror saw Marilyn Monroe's reflection looking back at her. The exact mirror was then moved to the mezzanine hallway right near the hotel's lobby. And now more guests claim to see Marilyn Monroe in that very mirror. At a number 6 spot, we have the Russell Hotel. The Russell Hotel is located in Sydney, Australia and before its time of being a hotel, the building was used to be Sydney's first general hospital. So you already know there are more than a few spirits in these rooms. The hospital was built in 1788 and it housed many patients that had the bubonic plague. Then in 1887, the hospital was shut down and a hotel was built in its place. And ever since, the hotel has had a dark history associated with it. Specifically, the most haunted place in the hotel is room 8. In this room, it's said that a sailor was murdered and now if you're a woman sleeping alone in the room, you'll wake up to a man sitting at the foot of your bed. Right in the hump of our list, we have the Crescent Hotel. The Crescent Hotel and Spa is located in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. And was originally built in 1886. Medians and paranormal investigators have explored here and found the hotel showed signs of being a portal to the other side. Before it was a hotel, the Mount Top Reserve served as both a girls college and cancer treatment hospital in the 30s where Dr. Norman Baker claimed to have the cure for cancer. Patients of Dr. Baker who had stayed here and trusted him had thought his magic elixir was the cure for cancer when in reality it was a useless mix of watermelon seeds, brown corn silk, alcohol and carbolic acid. Many of the patients passed away and it's said that their ghosts are thought to still roam the halls of the hotel. They do have a nightly ghost tour, so if you're ever in town, go check it out and let me know what happens. At a number 4 spot, we have the Hawthorne Hotel. The Hawthorne Hotel is in Salem, Massachusetts. It possibly has a slight connection to the Salem witch trials of the 1600s. Just for a little witch history 101. The first woman who was executed during the trials was Bridget Bishop. Bridget is said to have owned an apple orchard which was on the same grounds the hotel stands today. While walking through the hotel, people have claimed to pick up the scent of apples, which is said to be the spirit of Bridget. On separate occasions, guests of the hotel have seen the apparition of a woman standing still in the corner of the hallway of room 612. She is also seen around the hotel where it seems that she never strays too far away from that very room. 
I love apples, but if it's related to an evil spirit, then no thanks. At our number three spot, we have the Malaga Inn. Located in the downtown historic district of Mobile, Alabama, the Malaga Inn is one of the most haunted places in the state of Alabama. Originally built in the 1860s, these twin town homes were converted in the 1960s as a hotel. It's just not Mardi Gras that brings guests to this hotel, but the haunting story behind it. Many people attribute it to the underground secret tunnel, which was used by Civil War soldiers. Chances are that if you stay at this hotel, you experience things that are unusual and borderline supernatural. Many guests staying in the 39 room hotel have said they see chandeliers swinging aggressively, lights coming on and off furniture being moved across rooms, and even ghostly figures getting into bed with the guests when they're alone. At a number two spot, we have the Cecil Hotel. This hotel is regarded as one of the most deadliest hotels in America. In 2013, after residents of an LA hotel started to complain about their tap water, they soon discovered the body of 21-year-old Elisa Lam. Her passing remains an unsolved mystery to this day, but strange surveillance footage showed her acting odd inside of an elevator. She would be looking out as if someone was just following her and just tracking her down. After an investigation and a documentary, it was discovered that she did it intentionally, which makes this case even more sad. This place is a hot spot for serial killers, which is particularly dangerous, but in the past, Cecil Hotel was supposed to be this glamorous hotel with marble lobbies, 15 floors, and 700 rooms. So where did it go wrong? Well, five years of opening, America fell into a Great Depression, and this hotel became a safe haven for criminals, the poor and the vulnerable. The hotel soon got plagued by homicides and accidental tragedies. More notably, in the 1980s, Richard Ramirez, aka the Night Stalker, would show up at the hotel to wreak havoc. Now it's said to be haunted by the ghosts of those who passed there. At our number one spot, we have the Fairmont Banff Springs Hotel. The hotel has been haunted since 1888. One of the most famous ghosts seen at the hotel is the Ghost Bride. The Ghost Bride is either seen on the main staircase or in the hotel's ballroom. The Ghost Bride story goes that on her wedding day, something startled her so bad and caused her to slip and fall. Some say that her heel caught in her dress or that her dress caught in flames by a candle. Whether either story is true or not, what is known is that she passed away on that very staircase. Ever since, hotel staff and visitors claim to have seen a veiled figure walking up and down that stairs. And on the other hand, others claim seeing her in the ballroom dancing since she had no time to dance with her husband. Man, this has to be one of the worst wedding accidents ever. At a number 10 spot, we have the Awani Hotel. The Awani Hotel, located in Yosemite National Park, California, California is a beautiful and historic hotel with a long reputation for being haunted. Yeah, you can't have anything in Yosemite apparently. Built in the early 1900s, the hotel has a rich history and has played host to many famous guests over the years. However, it is also rumored to be the home to a number of ghosts and other supernatural phenomena. One of the most well-known ghosts at the Iwani Hotel is said to be a former caretaker who took his own life in one of the rooms. Many people have reported seeing strange lights as well and hearing strange noises all throughout the hotel. Some have even claimed to see the ghost of the caretaker himself. In addition to the ghost of the caretaker, some people have reported seeing the ghost of a young girl who is said to haunt the hotel's dining room. They say she likes to play around and at some time she likes to approach visitors as if she's a real person. At a number nine spot with the RMS Queen Mary. The RMS Queen Mary is a retired ocean liner that is now a hotel and a museum in Long Beach, California. Built in the 1930s, the ship was once a luxurious and popular mode of transportation for travelers crossing the Atlantic Ocean. However, it is now known for its reputation as a haunted location on the seas. Many people have reported strange and supernatural things coming aboard the RMS Queen Mary, including the ghosts of former passengers and crew members who passed away on the very ship. One of the ghosts that can be sighted in side of this ocean liner is that of a woman in a white dress who is said to haunt the first class swimming pool. And also there is the ghost of a former crew member who is said to haunt the engine room as well because he passed away there. In addition to these ghostly sightings, many people have reported hearing strange noises and feeling a presence on the very ship. Some have even claimed to have been touched or grabbed by unseen hands. Overall, the RMS Queen Mary is a fascinating and mysterious place to go. With a rich history and a reputation for being haunted, whether or not you believe in ghosts, a visit here is sure to be a unique and a memorable experience. At our number 8 spot with the Langham Hotel. 
Hotel. The Langham Hotel in London, England is a luxurious hotel with a big reputation for being haunted. Built in the 1800, the hotel has played host to many famous guests over the years, including royalty, politicians, and even celebrities. Visitors who come here claim to see the spirit of a former nobleman who was murdered in one of the hotel's rooms, known as the Brown Lady. The ghost is said to haunt the hotel's corridors and often seen by ghosts and other staff members. Some people have reported seeing her floating down the corridor as well, levitating off of the ground. Others have reported hearing strange noises coming from the room where she was killed. However, that just happens to be on the second floor and no one really knows what room it's in. In addition to the ghost of the brown lady, there are also reports of other supernatural activity inside of this hotel. Some have said the ghost of a former servant is said to have haunt the basement of this place, and others have claimed to hear the sound of a ghostly party coming from one of these empty rooms. At a number 7 spot, we have the Myrtle's Plantation. The Myrtle's Plantation in St. Francisville, Louisiana is a historic plantation house that is rumored to be haunted by the ghosts of former slaves who were executed on the property. Built in the late 1700s, the plantation has a long and dark history, including several instances of murder and violence. One of the most well-known ghosts at the Myrtle's Plantation is said to be that of a former slave named Chloe. Chloe was executed by her fellow slaves after she was caught eavesdropping on their conversations. She is said to haunt the plantation house where she can often be seen walking through the rooms and corridors. Some people have reported seeing her ghost, while others have reported hearing her strange noises and feeling a presence inside of the home. Others have also seen said that she has grabbed them out of the rooms and even into closets where they are being forced inside of them. Adding on to the tragedy of the home, the plantation's original owner, Clark Woodruff, was poisoned by his wife, who was later acquitted of the crime. Then another former owner, Judge Hardy, was shot and murdered on the property. These events, along with many of the other tragic stories associated with the plantation, are said to contribute to its reputation as a haunted location. No wonder. Number 6. The Ballygally Castle Hotel The Ballygally Castle Hotel in Northern Ireland is a historic hotel that is said to be haunted by the ghost of Lady Isabella Shaw. Lady Shaw was the wife of James Shaw, the original owner of the castle. She was known for her beauty and her love of fine clothing and jewelry. The story goes that one day, Lady Shaw became so obsessed with a particular necklace that she just refused to take it off. Even when she was climbing the castle's tower, as she reached the top, she lost her footing and fell to her death, still wearing the necklace. Since then, Lady Shaw's ghost is said to haunt the castle, appearing to guests and staff members. Some have reported seeing her ghostly figure walking the castle's halls, while others have reported feeling her presence in the rooms during the night. Many guests at the Ballygally Castle Hotel have reported strange occurrences as well, such as doors opening and closing on their own, ghostly voices, and objects moving around the room. Some even claim to see Lady Shaw's ghost stand in the rooms at the end of their bed just staring at them, still wearing the same necklace she was obsessed with in life. In the hump of her list, we have the Plaza Hotel. The Plaza Hotel in New York City is a luxury hotel built in 1907, and over the years, more and more creepy things come out of this place. The hotel is said to be haunted by the ghosts of former guests and employees, including A-list celebrities such as Marilyn Monroe, and even Theodore Roosevelt himself. One of the most famous ghost stories associated with this hotel is the tale of a ghost of a young girl who is sent to haunt the hotel's elevators. According to the legend, the girl was traveling with her family when they were involved in a car accident on their way to the hotel. She was the only survivor and she passed away with her injuries in one of the hotel's elevators. Since then, guests and employees at the Plaza Hotel have reported seeing the ghost of this young girl inside of the elevators. Some have reported feeling her presence in the rooms as night as well, with some seeing her standing in the dark corners of their rooms. Another ghost that is rumored at this hotel is of a man who is said to roam the hotel's lobby during the night, and also a woman who is said to haunt the hotel's bar. If you like luxury mixed with a little bit of scary, this hotel might be perfect for you. At a number 4 spot, we have Hotel Morgan. Established in 1925 in Morgantown, West Virginia is Hotel Morgan. And this hotel just screams luxury with its beautiful rooms, modern gym, and expansive dining areas. Despite its undeniable beauty, Hotel Morgan is claimed by many to be very haunted as well. The room that is said to be the most haunted in the hotel is room 314. It is believed that a young girl drowned in the bathtub here in the early days of the hotel. And after that, every guest of room 314 has reported some strange occurrence during their overnight stay. Notorious guests of the hotel include Eleanor Roosevelt and Harry S. Truman. 
and during both their stays, they would recall things they just couldn't explain. At number three spot, we have the Diplomat Hotel. The Diplomat Hotel is one of the go-to places for ghost hunters from different parts of the world. In fact, this hotel was featured in documentaries from different countries because of its dark history. The Diplomat Hotel is believed to be built during the early 1900s, and this was built to become a vacation home for the Spaniards, priests, and nuns. This hotel was home to many happy and beautiful memories, but all of these changed during World War II. According to the stories, when the Japanese came, they gathered all the people in the hotel, separated them into different rooms, and proceeded to kill all of them. The people in the hotel were shot to death, beheaded, and even stabbed. The worst part is, is at the center of the hotel, where the fountain is, is located in the same place where the children were gathered and murdered. After World War II, the vacation house was converted into a hotel, but another tragic incident occurred. A fire started in the hotel, and the firefighters took a long Long time to arrive because it was far from civilization back then. Many guests who were staying there passed away, which is another reason for the hotel to be haunted. The people working and visiting the hotel have experienced many scary encounters. There are also times that the ghosts are photographed and recorded, and tourists have shared their experiences seeing a nun, priest, and child while staying at this place. At number 10 spot, we have the Haunted Igloo Hotel. Located in Cantwell, Alaska is one of the most unique hotels you'll ever see. However, can we call it a hotel if it's never officially been opened up to people? I guess not. Well, sometime in the 1970s, a man named Leon Smith began the construction of this building. His original plan was to make it a never before seen hotel, but over the years, it never managed to open due to various code violations. For example, they had undersized windows, which didn't even meet the requirement of the state. And in the end, the building was too big to demolish, so it just stood there for the next four decades. Now, apart from this hotel looking pretty eerie, what makes it so scary? Well, because this is an area notorious notorious for grizzly bear attacks, and many have been reported in the area surrounding the hotel. But what makes many stray far, far away is that some have said they saw a woman in white who haunts the ruins. She can be seen looking out of the windows and sometimes by the entrance. Number two, the Weinkauf Hotel. After its completion in 1912, the Weinkauf Hotel was renowned as being a fireproof building due to its steel construction. It was located in the heart of downtown Atlanta. It was grand, it was modern, but for some reason, the hotel only featured one stairway, which turned out to be a huge fatal mistake. Because on December 7, 1946, a fire engulfed the hotel, which was also the deadliest hotel fire in US history, which killed a total of 119 people. The hotel started on the third floor, which only meant that everyone from the third floor to the 15th floor had no way of escaping the building, because of the one staircase. While some managed to jump out of the windows into nets where firemen were holding, the majority of people would be leaping to their death. The hotel has since been rebuilt, but much of the charred past remains inside of the building. Not physically, but mentally. Guests and workers report voices and footsteps coming from empty rooms, especially ones above the third floor, with the right reason. Then on some nights, guests can hear screams inside of the hallways, also above the third floor. All this paranormal activity above the third floor only gives more reason to believe this building is haunted by the 119 people who passed away there. At a number one spot, we the Clown Motel. If you have a fear for clowns, this motel is probably the last place you want to sleep at. This hotel has an obvious theme for clowns, and this was because the father of the owner was a clown collector and ended up being buried at the old Tonopah Cemetery right beside of the hotel. Motel and cemetery, probably not the most appealing combination. Not only does each and every single room have all types of clown decorations, but past workers and owners have claimed it was haunted since the time it was built. They would recall hearing footsteps and voices coming from unoccupied rooms, and even on their website, they would have different rooms and their spiritual encounters in each and every single one of them. Because of this, they have a disclaimer which reads, quote, by visiting the clown motel, you acknowledge that you may encounter interaction with spiritual and or unexplained phenomena and or other unexplainable, unusual, or paranormal activity or interactions which may include risk, which may may or may not be foreseeable. The Cloud Motel would not be held liable for any bodily injury, damage to personal property, emotional distress, death, or other harm caused by the aforementioned. Starting off this countdown at number 10, the Amityville House. 30 miles outside of New York City, nestled in the Long Island town of Amityville, stands the house forever linked to the Amityville horror phenomenon. On November 13th, 1974, the state was the scene of a horrible event. Using a 35 Marlin rifle, 23-year-old Ronald J. DeFaro Jr. took the lives of his entire family while they were asleep, which included his parents and his four siblings. 13 months later, the Lutz family purchased the home at a 
drastically reduced price of $80,000, but it only lasted 28 days before leaving it. Their spine-tingling tales of paranormal activity are what propelled the legend of the Amityville horror and spawned a torrent of books, documentaries, and films. George was said to wake up at 3.15 a.m. every morning, which was around the time Ron carried out his murders. The Lutz family claimed many things happening in the house, like the smell of strange odors, see green slime oozing out of the walls and keyholes, and experience cold spots in certain areas of the house. When a priest came to bless the house, he allegedly heard her voice scream, get out. He told the Lutzes to never sleep in that particular room of the house ever again. Number 9. Grey Gardens The Grand East Hampton estate known as Grey Gardens has a fascinating history with many ups and downs. The four acres of land was purchased by a wealthy couple in 1895 before the home was built in the early 1900s. By 1913, it was sold to the president of a coal company. Then later in 1923, the home was sold to Edith Bale. After a series of misfortunes and financial losses, the home fell into despair and was overrun by cats and raccoons and perhaps something else not from our world. Edith held on to the property until her passing in 1977 and her spirit is said to remain at Grey Gardens, watching over the house. Among the believers is author and journalist Sally Quinn, best known for her column in the Washington Post, who purchased the home from her daughter, Little Edie, in 1979, and she swears that it's haunted. Now coming in at number 8, Winchester Mystery House. According to legend, the Victorian mansion that sits on a busy street in San Jose, California, is haunted by the ghosts of everyone that unfortunately passed away by a Winchester rifle. In order to appease them, the house's owner, Sarah Winchester, the heir to the Winchester rifle fortune, and the founder's widow, added room after room to the house to add more space for the deceased. Winchester didn't simply add rooms, however. She created a labyrinth filled with halls that led nowhere, cut off staircases, sloping floors, and a rabbit warren of chambers. According to ABC News, the house has 10,000 windows, 2,000 doors, 47 fireplaces, 40 staircases, 13 bathrooms, and 9 kitchens. Since Winchester passed away in 1922, the home has hosted tours for those willing to walk among the Winchester ghosts. Number 7. Bellwitch In the early 1800s, John Bell bought a tract of farmland along Tennessee's Red River. Bell and his family thrived on the farm until they started to see strange looking animals around the property, most notably a dog with a rabbit's head. From that point on, the family was plagued by unseen forces, largely targeted at Bell and his daughter Betsy. They experienced physical attacks, heard unexplained noises, and even spoke with the entity, who in at least one account identified herself as Bell's former neighbor, Kate Batts who was exacting revenge from beyond the grave. The entity is rumored to have prevented Betsy's marriage. Here at number 6, Mercer Williams. Located across from one of Savannah, Georgia's most famous and pristine squares is the Mercer Williams House, and it dates back to 1860. In the 1970s, famed preservationist and antiques dealer Jim Williams restored the home to its former glory after years of neglect. This home played host to three untimely passings, including 11-year-old Tommy Downs when he fell off the roof in 1969, the 1981 fatal shooting of Danny Hansford by Williams, and Williams himself when he passed in the same room as Danny less than a year after being cleared of Danny's passing in a fourth trial. That story is also from the best-selling book of Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. Much like the rest of the city, the home was supposedly built right on top of unmarked graves. Rumors about the crime and ghost stories continue to swirl to this day. Halfway at number 5, Ackley House. Nicknamed Ackley House after its one-time occupants, the Ackley family, this classic Queen Anne sits on the Hudson River across from Sleepy Hollow, New York. The many ghosts who roamed the halls were nothing but friendly. Then it came time to sell the home in the late 1980s. After some time in the market, the Stamboski family put down a down payment and were ready to relocate from Manhattan when a contractor made a comment about the home's haunted reputation. The Ackleys then found themselves entangled in a legal battle over whether or not they should have disclosed the haunted nature of the house. In a landmark decision now referred to as the Ghostbusters ruling, Ackley House was deemed haunted by the New York Supreme Court and the buyers were able to pull out of the sale while also getting half of their down payment back. This house has since been home to several several celebrities, including musician Ingrid Michaelson. Number 4. The Villisca Axe Murder House On June 10, 1912, Josiah and Sarah Moore were bludgeoned till they ended up passing away inside of their home in Villisca, Iowa. Their four children and two friends who were spending the night also passed away, and to this day the crime remains unsolved. Their home is considered to be one of the most haunted houses in the country, and guests are drawn to it. People even pay more than $400 to stay just one night. Tours have been cut short by children's voices, falling lamps, moving ladders, and flying objects says the Murder House website. And in 2014, a paranormal investigator stabbed himself after spending the night. Number 3. Villa de Vici Located near Lake Home, Italy, the House of Witches
Witches dates back to 1854 to 1857, when it was built as a summer house for Count Felix de Vici. The family was only able to spend a few years there after their lives ended in a tragedy right after it was built. First, the architect passed away after a year of construction. Then in 1862, Count de Vici came home to discover that someone had taken his wife's life and his daughter was missing. When he could not find her after a year of searching, he passed away by taking his own life. His brother then moved into the home and his family continued to live there until World War II. Now it's been vacant since the 1960s and an avalanche in 2002 wiped out all the houses in the area except for this one. Coincidence? Number two, the Lemp Mansion. The Lemp Mansion in St. Louis, which is known to be one of the most haunted places in America due to tragic history. The 33 room home was built in the 1860s by William Lemp, a successful brewery owner who ended up taking his own life in 1904 after the youngest of his four sons, Frederick, passed away. A few years later, his wife also passed of cancer in the house. Then in 1922, William Lemp Jr. shot himself in the same room. William Sr. took his own life himself. Then Charles Lemp, William's third son, shot his dog in the basement of the home and then took his life in his room. That same year, the house was sold and transformed into a boarding house, where reports of hauntings began. According to Destination America, witnesses have experienced burning sensations and slamming doors. Today, the Lent Mansion is a restaurant and inn that holds events. On Saturday night, the inn even hosts a murder mystery dinner. Now coming in at number one, The Conjuring House. I'm sure we all know about this one, but if not, I'll tell you all about it. 1971, the Perron family moved into a 14-room farmhouse in Harrisville, Rhode Island, where Carolyn, Roger, and their five daughters began to notice strange things happening almost immediately after they moved in. Carolyn would notice that the broom went missing, or seemed to move from place to place on its own. She would hear the sound of something scraping against the kettle in the kitchen when no one was in there. She'd find small piles of dirt in the center of a newly cleaned kitchen floor. Carolyn allegedly researched the history of the home and discovered that it had been in the same family for eight generations, and that many of them had passed away under mysterious and horrible circumstances. Several of the children had drowned in a nearby creek. One was murdered, and a few of them hanged themselves in the attic. Over the 10 years that the family lived in the house, the Warrens made multiple trips to investigate. At one point, Lorraine Warren conducted a seance to attempt to contact the spirits that were possessing the family. During the seance, Carolyn became possessed, speaking in tongues and rising from the ground in her chair. At number 10 spot, we have the Turpin family house. David and Louise Turpin's 13 children grew up in a highly controlled environment. It was so abusive that when the media raided their home and discovered what the kids endured all these years, they dubbed their home the House of Horrors. Their eldest sister, Jennifer, mentioned that the siblings were only allowed to eat once a day and bathe only once per year. They were reportedly left starving while the couple enjoyed eating junk food. The kids were beaten up upon the slightest attempt to steal food from their own parents. And the children were punished for the silliest thing and even faced violent beatings from both their parents. Luis once pushed one of the siblings down the stairs for entering her bedroom while their father beat them with sticks and belts until they bled. The police found that the children were malnourished and some were even chained up. There were even lots of filth found inside of the rooms. And it was reported that the children were forced to live around such filth, including rotten food, spoiling garbage, and the sight and smell of feces. At a number nine spot, we have the White House. Of course, the White House is on this list. However, I could only pick one point. William Harrison was the ninth president of the United States and holds the record for the least amount of time as president, just at 31 days. But his ghost has been there way longer than that. Passing away from pneumonia, William Harrison would also be the first person who died inside of the White House. Not the greatest achievement, I guess. Now witnesses report unexplained noises coming from the attic, specifically over the area of Yellow Oval Room, which has now been connected to Harrison's spirit. Now there is a complete third floor that has replaced the attic. However, workers still report seeing Harrison roaming the halls and his own room. His apparition appears to take on a blue glow with him coughing profusely due to his pneumonia. Although no harm has been done by his ghost, the third floor seems to be avoided as much as possible for those who work at the White House. At number eight spot with the Heyman House. Located in Sutton Braxton County, West Virginia, is the Heyman House. Built in 1894, the William Heyman House is a very historic place in the state with its rich interior craftsmanship and rare decorative materials. However, going through more recent owners and visitors, the locals now claim that there are more than a few spirits living inside of the home. During the time Heyman lived at the house, he suffered the passing of his eight-year-old granddaughter and another one of his family members who died from strangulation. Visitors claim that the mirror in the foyer is guarded by a gray-haired woman, while the second floor is haunted by a woman in white. At a number seven spot with the Fairy State Plantation Home. With 11 spirits calling the Fairy State Plantation House their home, Haunted House seems like a fair title for this site. Now used as a museum and educational educational center
Center. The house also offers Halloween tours called the Stroll of Lost Souls. And it's also a regular site for ghost hunters and paranormal activity groups. The story goes that this house was used originally as a school, tavern, and then eventually a mansion. Once the mansion burned down in 1828, it was reconstructed by abused and mistreated slaves. The house's many spirits included the woman in white who fell down from the stairs and the slave named Sally Walk who is said to still be grieving for her late fiance. But the most famous one here is Grace Sherwood, who is named the Witch of Pungo. She was in fact the last person convicted of witchcraft in Virginia, having to spend seven years in jail and later being released. But when she passed away, reports say that her body disappeared without a trace, leaving many to believe she truly was a witch. At number six spot, we have the Thawi Watana Deserted House. This is a supposed cursed house where everyone who has entered the house would be met with a terrible fate. In the Thawi Watana district of Bangkok, rumor has it that in 2015, a group of early teenagers entered the home. They were just out partying, so they entered the home drunk on alcohol and high on other narcotics. The reason they entered the home was because many locals claimed that the house was indeed haunted. So the boys decided to go check on it for themselves. This ended up being a very terrible decision later on. It said that whoever enters the house will have one of the home spirits attached to them. It wasn't until three months after when two of the boys were fatally wounded in a motorcycle accident, and then a year later, a third boy also got into another fatal accident. Then in the next year, two more of the boys lost their lives in a house fire. The odd thing about these deaths was that the witnesses claimed that they saw a woman in white sitting on the backs of the motorcycles before their accidents, and also they saw the woman in white at the house before the fire. In the hump of our list, we have House of Horror. The only horror movie to win Best Picture Oscar, Silence of the Lambs, made Hannibal the Cannibal Lecter a chilling household name, while putting Thomas Harris's bestseller and the true crime cases that inspired it into the national spotlight. I know Hannibal was a different type of beast, but he was inspired by a real life serial killer named Gary Hednick. He was probably the furthest from being good as he was Philadelphia's most notorious criminal. He was infamous for his house of horrors where he would do unimaginable things to six different women that I can't even mention in this video. Even in the movie, Hannibal asks Starling, quote, what does he do? This man you seek. In which she replies, he attacks women. They could have easily been talking about Gary Hednick in this scene, especially since he inspired Buffalo Bill as well. Number four, the Villisca act murder home. On June 10th, 1912, Josiah and Sarah Moore were bludgeoned till they ended up passing away inside of their home in Villisca, Iowa. Their four children and two friends who were spending the night also passed away, and to this day, the crime remains unsolved. Their home is considered to be one of the most haunted houses in the country, and guests are drawn to it still. People even pay $400 to stay just one night in this home. And tours have been cut short by children's noises, falling lamps, moving ladders, and even flying objects. And even in 2014, a paranormal investigator stabbed himself after spending a night at this home. Number three, the house on Ridge Avenue. In the north side of Pittsburgh lies where it's also known as the house the devil built. The house is also 1129 Ridge Avenue and known as the Conglier House. It was built in 1860s by Charles Conglier who lived in the house with his wife Lida and their maid Essie. The maid and Charles would be having a secret affair and soon after, the wife overheard what was happening so she collected a knife and a meat cleaver and proceeded to murder the two. She would be found later humming lullabies as she rocked on her chair. Then in 1900, Dr. Ada Brunreicher purchased the home. One day, the neighbors heard a woman screaming in the house and called the police. Once the cops arrived, the doctor was nowhere to be found, but instead there was only the body of the woman with no head. Then a single mother and her five children lived there in the 1920s, until a nearby natural gas tank exploded and killed the mother, causing the five children to be left abandoned. Although the tale is said to be fabricated, many of the stories about this house are indeed true. Number two, Tulsa's Hex House. Located on 10th East 21st Street in Oklahoma is the remnants of a home that was once a horror house. The owner of the home during the 1940s was a 45 year old woman named Carolyn Smith. However, she wouldn't be the only resident in this home as she would keep two other women there as quote unquote slaves. These two women were named Virginia Evans and Willetta Horner who were 30 and 31 years old at the time. They claim that they're being hexed by Corlin and were basically forced to give their paychecks directly to her with their big reward coming when they arrived in the gates of heaven. Basically, Corlin would keep these two women in her basement and just live off their checks. But that wasn't all. She would also receive request aid from one of her slave's parents in which she received a total of $20,000 for nursing care. After the two women were suspected of missing, a police investigation eventually found them in prison in this home, living in the worst condition and this was during a span of seven years. 
Corlin would only get subjected to one year in prison and the house was demolished with a parking lot built on top of it. However, some believe that the basement is still underneath this parking lot. At a number one spot, we have the Amityville house. 30 miles outside of New York City, nestled in the Long Island town of Amityville, stands the house forever linked to the Amityville horror phenomenon. On November 13, 1974, the estate was the scene of a horrible event. Using a .35 Marlin rifle, 23-year-old Ronald Defoe took the lives of his entire family while they were asleep, which included his parents and four siblings. 13 months later, the Lutz family purchased a home at a drastically reduced price of $80,000 but only lasted 28 days before leaving it. Their spine-tingling tales of paranormal activity are what propelled the legend of the Amityville horror and spawned a torrent of books, documentaries, and even films. George was said to wake up at 3.15 a.m. every morning, which is around the same time Ron carried out his murders. The Lutz family claimed many things happening in the home, like the smell of strange odors, see green slime oozing out of the walls, and keyholes and experience cold spots in certain areas of the home. When a priest came to bless the house, he allegedly heard a voice scream, quote, get out. He told the Lutzes to never sleep in that particular room in the house ever again, and ever since, this legend has carried on. Starting our list right, we have the ghost of Abraham Lincoln. The ghost of US President Abraham Lincoln, also known as the White House ghost, is said to have haunted the White House since his assassination in 1865. Staff have heard mysterious footsteps in Lincoln's old room, which was odd since no one was in that room. Presidential pets such as Ronald Reagan's would be caught barking at Lincoln's door. First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt also reported feeling Lincoln's presence as she worked in her office in the Lincoln bedroom, as if he were peering over her shoulder. It makes complete sense that they may have seen the ghost of Lincoln, but just in case you forgot, he was brutally assassinated at the conclusion of the Civil War, meaning he had unfinished business, which is a common trend in all ghost stories. Coming in hot at number 9, we have The Thing. In July 1911, Major Archibald Butt, okay, don't laugh, was President Taft's military aide. In a letter to his sister, he stated that the White House is haunted by a ghost of a young boy around the age of 14 to 15 years old. This ghost would be known to all as The Thing. Although very few people saw a glimpse of The Thing, the majority of people in the White House were recalled feeling a slight pressure on their shoulders as if someone was leaning over them to see what they were doing. Almost all workers at the White House at the time reported the same form of pressure on their shoulders, eventually making it a big issue. The ghostly encounters caused some staff to quit and others fully believing in the ghost questioned the humanity of the ghost. Others had thought it was the spirit of Lincoln's son, Willie Lincoln who passed away at 11 years old. It's crazy to think that everyone has experienced the same phenomenon. It would be rather hard to think this is faked. The Lincolns are back at it again at number eight, but this time we have Mary Todd Lincoln. Wife of Abraham Lincoln, Mary was said to practice spiritualism in the White House frequently. Influenced by the death of her second son, spiritualism was practiced by Mary to communicate with him and others she held dear in the afterlife. She would report speaking to her late son daily and would also conduct seances within the walls of the White House. As word broke out, desperate families would come to her seeking the unknown. And in the midst of the Civil War, many widowed wives went to speak to their husbands. Mary would begin to notice strange things in the White House, such as hearing stomping and swearing in the room of former President Andrew Jackson, known as the Rose Room. Could it be her interest in spiritualism that introduced more of the supernatural into the White House? Taking our number 7 spot, we have William Henry Harrison. He was the ninth president of the United States and holds the record for the least amount of time as president, just at 31 days. But his ghost has been there way longer than that. Passing away from pneumonia, William Harrison would also be the first person who died in the White House. Not the greatest achievement, I guess. Now witnesses report unexplained noises from the attic, specifically over the area of the yellow oval room. Now there's a complete third floor that replaced the attic. However, workers still report seeing Harrison roaming the halls and in his room. His apparition appears to take on a blue glow with him, coughing profusely due to his pneumonia. Although no harm has been done by his ghost, 
the third floor seems to be voided as much as possible to those who work at the White House. Stealing our number six spot, we have the British soldier fire starter. It was the war of 1812 and the great burning of Washington occurred, a British attack on Washington DC. In this attack, many important buildings in the capital were burned down, including the White House, then called the Presidential Mansion. Then things got unexpectedly worse for the British. As the US government fled the White House, the British thought victory was near, but then a grand scale thunderstorm alongside our tornado swept the area around the White House, killing both British soldiers and American citizens in the process. If you can imagine a Michael Bay movie, that's exactly how I picture this moment going down. Now it is said that a lonesome British soldier whose garments date back to the 1800s appears on the White House lawn every now and again. It is said that this soldier is still roaming around the lawn of the White House with a rather large torch, almost as if the flame was eternal. Right in the hump of our list, we have Dolly Madison. The ghost of Dolly Madison, who is the wife of 4th President James Madison, was reported countless times visiting the fabled Rose Garden outside the White House. She was originally thought to be the first who cared for and nurtured the garden, but the Rose Garden was actually created by First Lady Edith Wilson. The story goes that President Woodrose Wilson's wife, Edith, asked a few employees to transfer the garden to a different area, but as they were following her orders, they were met with the angry spirit of Dolly. They were chased away from the area, and ever since, the Rose Garden has remained in the exact same spot where Dolly Madison wanted it. At number 4, we have the Demon Cat. Spotted time and time again around the White House, the Demon Cat takes on many different variations to different people, appearing as a normal sized cat and as large as an elephant to others. The Secret Service has reported seeing paw prints around the White House, which is surprising since no pets are allowed in the White House. The weird thing is, is that the cat only appears during a presidency switch or a national tragedy. We can call it the bearer of bad news. And potentially this is where we get the idea of an unlucky black cat. High up in our number 3 spot, we have Anna Surratt. Anna Surratt is the daughter of the Lincoln assassination conspirator Mary Surratt. Mary was the first woman who was executed by the federal government due to her intentions to assassinate Abraham Lincoln. Her daughter Anna would travel to the White House to speak with President Johnson, but would be denied any sort of entry. Her daughter Anna desperately did everything in her power to stop the execution, but to no avail. Her mother would pass. So here's where it gets dicey. It was reported that the ghost of her would still visit the White House with knocking that got louder and louder. Workers could hear her pleading to spare her mother's life and every July 7th she would just be sitting on the steps sad since this is the day her mother's execution occurred. Coming in at number 2 we have Abigail Adams. The wife of President John Adams, Abigail, was known to enjoy her daily laundry, treating it like self care. However, after her death she would still be seen doing it. White House workers reported seeing her ghost doing laundry in the exact same pattern that Abigail did it when she was alive. Abigail's pattern consisted of hanging her wet laundry in the east room because it had the most sun, meaning it would be the warmest. And in the afterlife, she's still doing it. President Taft even reported seeing her ghost, reaching out to grab the laundry to the east room for hanging. The White House has then changed the location of the laundry room, however staff working in that era would report smelling wet laundry and lavender in the room. I don't think anyone can stop her from doing laundry. Taking our number one spot, we have the red phone. If there was a presidential symbol to showcase power, secrecy, and responsibility, it would be the most infamous red phone. As seen on many movies and shows, the red phone is a supposed direct communication line between Russia and the US. However, the red phone is more of a metaphor rather than a real object. Did you really think a bright, noticeable red phone carried out the most important and sophisticated conversations between the world's largest superpowers? Instead, secure lines with encrypted messages were used for communication. The red phone instead resembled the security between Russia and the US, and the myth of the red phone rose when nuclear buttons would be painted red, and people would begin associating the two with one another. Makes you think that if this red phone resembled the security of these two nations, all it would take is one bad fall and security be blown and an all out war starts. Just kidding, let's hope not. 